Molosan Bonani, hello, how's it? Shalom, good evening. Welcome to another episode of the Big Daddy Liberty Show. That's right, the Big Daddy Liberty Show comes to you every Wednesday at 7 p.m. I am your favorite fat boy, Big Daddy Liberty. And uh, yeah, guys, it's a jam-packed show. I have a very interesting guest with me today. Uh, before I get to that, remember, if you like the show, you like what uh, your favorite uh, street fighter for classically liberal ideas gets up to in communities across the country, then you can support the work by becoming a contributor to the show. Of course, as little as a single dollar a month, put a dollar in the box, ah, as they say, uh, goes a long way to supporting the show. That's 20 bucks a month, guys. You can do do that, of course, by becoming a Patreon subscriber. Um, the link to that is in the description of the video. Or, of course, you can donate via PayPal. Hey, ta-da. Welcome to it, guys. It's another Wednesday evening. You know what it means. Um, we're about to talk things, um, all things liberty and freedom as we discuss and make the case for South Africans being a faith flag, family, and freedom society, those four Fs that your favorite fat boy always talks about. Um, welcome to it. Tonight's show, we look at, well, I take it will be the most topical thing <laughs> that's happened in the country at the moment, and that were the scenes that played out out in uh, the northern suburbs of Cape Town, specifically in Brackenfell, of course, which is a tiny, mostly Afrikaans-speaking community in the north of Cape Town. And uh, if you're wondering what happened in Brackenfell, well, the story began effectively last week on uh, Wednesday slash Thursday when reports came out, erroneously, now that we, uh, we know, that the school had somehow uh, organized a whites-only metric dance. And of course, this was ran with, uh, or the media, excuse me, ran with this uh, in the papers, uh, you know, the mainstream media being what they are, obsessed with all things race and racism in this country. They ran with this false story. And um, predictably, as you uh, always hear on my show, uh, <laughs> the politicians in this country then latched onto this, uh, namely the economic freedom uh, fighters. Excuse me. Oh, yikes. That kombucha came back. Um, the economic freedom fighters then latched onto this and decided in their wisdom that they were going to target these kids and descend on the school to, quote, protest peacefully. We all know what that means with the EFF, uh, <laughs> CC Clicks, CC H&M et al. Um, but nonetheless, the EFF then descend on the school on the Friday, last week Friday, and find a wall of parents at the gate waiting to defend, uh, or rather a wall of parents at the school uh, to defend their school children. And I've made the point in various vlogs on the show that you do not mess with people's kids and expect them to be nice to you. So on that Friday, the EFF met with parents, private security, and the police who had formed a barricade around the school. And, uh, you know, after a few words were exchanged, uh, you know, the EFF decided to leave, um, to gather reinforcements and to come back. And come back they did, because the following Monday, um, effectively two days ago, the EFF rocked up at the school in larger numbers, and this time, unfortunately, it wasn't just words that were exchanged, but there were fisticuffs and quite a few clashes outside the school, as the parents this time decided to go after the EFF and say, you should not be here to intimidate our children, to intimidate the institutions that we care about, the, we being the parents of course, and referring to the school. Again, I've always made this point that, you know, people will defend the things that they genuinely care about. And if I make the argument, as I often do, that we are a faith flag, family, and freedom type society, then people will defend their families and the very institutions in society that house our families in whatever context, in this case, a school and their children. So uh, it was predictable in my estimation that, of course, things would lead to inflamed tensions in a country where the police have shown a track record of cowering to the thugs that the EFF can and often are when they peacefully protest. We'll go with that for the purposes of the show. <laughs> but um, I'm not going to waffle on about this one. I have a special guest, someone who will help me unpack these events, and we'll talk about the broader uh, implications of it, you know, the ideological underpinnings that often see the EFF become the violent sort of thugs that they are at these peaceful protests. 
<laughs> um, so I'm going to have Roman Kabinek after the short break. Uh, remember, guys, if you're just joining us now, you're watching the Big Daddy Liberty Show. This is the premier once a week Liberty Show on South Africa's alternative media space. My name is Sikhi Ngobese, Big Daddy Liberty. After the short break, a conversation with Roman Kabinek, the host, of course, of the Morning Shots podcast. I'll see you guys after the short message. All right, guys, welcome back to the Big Daddy Liberty Show. My name is Sifian Obese, Big Daddy Liberty. I'm not alone, as you can see, in uh, the makeshift studio. I'm joined by the host of the Morning Shot podcast. Make sure, before I even say anything else, go to uh, the Morning Shot page, like, subscribe to the page. I think he's also on YouTube, excuse me, on uh, Facebook, and you can like his pages on there. And, of course, his website. That's www.morningshot.com. Dot uh, Sia dot ZA. There we go. Koza. Dot Koza. You know, I always uh, cross the comms and Kozas. But, um, you know, Roman Kabanek, brother, welcome to the show. Big Daddy, thank you for having me. I mean, I must take, uh, I'm a bit affronted by what you said earlier. You said you are the premier alternative news source. <laughs> uh, we'll have no, to fight for that. No, I said the that. Liberty Show, man. We'll, we'll have to fight for that <laughs> because I think... I certainly am the premier alternative news. Well, there you go. Ding, ding, ding. The, 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 the fight is well underway in this regard. And um, speaking about fighting and things being well underway, dude, Brackenfell, the score, of course, being, uh, you know, EFF fascist zero, uh, the parents two. Uh, your thoughts initially on this before I pepper you with questions? Yeah, very much so. So uh, you, you, you <laughs> explain what the story is. I mean, essentially, the, the matric dance ball was privatized, set up by a few parents, there's conflicting views about who was invited and who wasn't invited. Apparently, people had to pay 500 rand. Some people didn't want to pay. Some people were scared of, to go out because it was COVID-19. So essentially, out of 264 matriculants, 42 arrived at this venue and had a matric dance, right? Did the invitation say white only? No. Was there any aspersions to say white only? No. The people who rocked up, who wanted to go out, and those who paid, arrived. Mm. They all happen to be white. Mm -hmm. There's no huge racist conspiracy. Absolutely. And again, it begged the question of why the third largest political party in this country felt it was politically profitable or even wise to then go after people's children by descending on their school to protest exactly this, a private event. What's next, Roman? Will they be rocking up at your home when you're having a private uh, Christmas function and you know, saying, where's the blacks and where are the Indians and the Khalids? Uh, should we be imposing quotas on people's private lives or even public institutions? Well, I would love for them to rock up in my house. <laughs> That would be a proper fight. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, got them thanks for you, boy. <laughs> but really, but really, I mean, it's this notion of everything must represent the national demographics. It's crazy. Right? It's, it's insane. Yep. It's absolutely insane. I mean, between you and I, I've never seen an Indian drop up attendant in Gauteng ever. Right? And, and it destroys my soul. <laughs> I know there's a lack of representation. So should we go to Engine and stage a march? to say that the, the representativity is not up to scratch. This is the EFF's toolbox, mm. right? Let's look at the country. We represent black Africans, right? The real Africans. Everyone else here sort of arrived and committed genocide and committed a variety of other ills. And if you're Indian, you're not really African because the Indians are just as bad as the whites. Remember that little narrative that mm -hmm. happened? Uh, and the coloreds sort of, people forget about the coloreds, mm -hmm. which, is, which is a great shame because I think they're an important part of, of the cultural history of this country. But anyway, the EFF says South Africa only belongs to black Africans. We are the vanguard of the masses as black Africans. And basically, we are victims of a system that wasn't designed for us. So we are going to agitate that system mm. and try to change it in a violent, revolutionary manner. And that includes private metric balls <laughs> where there's 42 <laughs> people in attendance. Man... <laughs> Yeah, if out here acting like fire marshals, man, with these with these uh, <laughs> matric dancers, um, dude, I, I'm gonna speak to, I'm gonna I'm gonna pepper you with these questions because I think there are broader implications to what we saw play out um, at Brackenfell, and I think it bodes, depending on what side you're on, either well or ill of where South African society may go. Um, I want to make a statement, and I want to just get your sense. 
I had put forward in a vlog on this issue, and I said, what this also begins to show now is that there is a growing frustration amongst the law-abiding citizens in this country. You know, those sort of, as I like to describe them, the God-fearing, law-abiding, family-orientated guys, the ones who just get on with living in South Africa, um, who often watch the politics that play out in South Africa from a distance and sort of either laugh or just be disgusted because, you know, we're paying our taxes, you know, to, for these guys to, to, to play the fool. But we've always assumed that their tomfoolery happens there, in Parliament, in their spaces, where they go off to corporate South Africa, or whatever the case may be, never in our communities, never where our families are. And you saw a, a bubbling of that anger, an expression of that anger from these parents. Now, they've been written off by the media, but talk to me about that anger and that palpable sense by ordinary people that the institutions of the state are not protecting them from politicians. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the biggest aggressors against the citizen in South Africa are politicians, mm. right? People talk about criminals, people talk about a variety of things. Politicians are the biggest aggressors to a large degree. You know that they've hollowed out, and those same politicians have hollowed out institutions that are supposed to protect the public. Yeah. Right. So we saw even in, in, let's go back a little bit, in Senegal, when you were there, right? There was great restraint shown by the people who lived in Senegal, or the people who came through to Senegal, mm -hmm. for that particular uh, bail hearing. No violence, thankfully. But you spoke to the EFF members on the ground. And unfortunately, these are poor, desperate people too. Yep. They don't know why they're there. They said, oh, there's racism somewhere, so we come to fight it. We don't know where or how. We were just bust in and we come here to dance and then we go home and we see Julius. Mm. And so we're happy. Mm. Right. EFF members themselves are not hateful. For the most part. Mm -hmm. right, you got the few acolytes. Um, but also, they are trying to latch on to a form of identity. Mm. And they do it through the EFF. Mm. Other people see the EFF as disgusting, like I do. But th their identity is where they are. right? So Brackenfall, I didn't know Brackenfall very well before this. Brackenfall seems to be quite a proud community. Mm -hmm. right? Lots who of history there. Who defend their institutions, which includes the high school. Mm. So if, if you have people coming from outside the area, coming in and you feel like you're on your own, you're going to take it upon yourself to defend the institutions. Mm. There was a great interview with a guy who was a former pupil. He says his nephew's been there, his family members have been there, there's never been racism, and the EFF can't just come in. There's an old age home over here, people are writing exams, don't come here with your political tomfoolery. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We will defend <laughs> it. We will defend it. And sort of this is like the last bastion of civilization to some degree, where the state can't protect you, so you have to do it by yourself. Mm. Absolutely, and uh, again... You saw this play out. People, I, I always say this on the show, people will defend their institutions, they'll defend their families, the things they care about. Um, but I want to take it in a slightly different direction. The EFF descends on this place. Talk to me about why you, you think they're even there, because now they're playing victim now on social media, and of course the media, the mainstream media, are helping them do this. Oh, look at these, these poor victims, you know, they, they just came there to peacefully protest. Protesting, they'll tell us, is uh, rightly, but they'll tell us that, you know, is the right of every citizen in every society, ignoring, of course, who the EFF are when they go out to protest. Your thoughts on the, the victim angle that the EFF is now grinding out? So here's, I mean, it's, it's difficult to really understand. I think predominantly we need to understand the EFF is a, is a middle-class construction, right? They, they, they don't attack people that fight back, for the most part. Mm -hmm. They attack corporates who are cowardly. They attack, like, H&M and clicks, as we saw. They were very cowardly. In Senegal, they restrained themselves greatly. Mm -hmm. They restrained. And then they said, oh, we had to uphold the law, the, you know, the rule of law. <laughs> they were there to protect state property. Yes. And then they uh, destroyed state property. And then they destroyed property. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, and in Brackenfall, I think there is this notion that it is not a place that the EFF is very, very strong. Mm -hmm. But also, it could be a diversion tactic. So this is where my conspiracy hat is on. Mm -hmm. We know that the nationalization of the Reserve Bank is on the cards. That bill is out for uh, public comment. That's right. right now. Number two, Zondo Commission wants Julius's bank accounts mm -hmm. and all of his family's bank accounts. Number three, Philip Truta, CFO of VBS Bank, signed a deal with the state to be state witness. Mm. Mm. The EFF is under a lot of pressure. Mm. And how do they let go of that pressure? Social unrest, mm. social anxiety. 
This conspiracy theory was brought to you by Tinfoil Hats. <laughs> Call now and we'll include a free Celine Dion CD. <coughs> just kidding, just kidding, guys. Just kidding, just a little bit of comic relief. But I don't think you're necessarily wrong. Um, we've seen this before, and I often warn my viewers about this notion of don't be dribbled, hashtag don't be dribbled. And you see this with the EFF, when there's a lot of pressure. Or, for instance, they even sometimes run interference for the ANC. If we know, for instance, that key economic data, which will look bad, is about to come out, which, for example, this week, we're going to see job, the latest job number and e uh, economic growth numbers, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm under correction on that one. Um, it, it didn't then surprise me that you saw the EFF build this, this uh, always around race, by the way, um, this narrative that, ha, ah, you know, we're here to fight racism because we're the legitimate voice of black people, uh, these commies will often tell us. And they get very upset when black people actually push back against them, as the guy you mentioned, for instance, uh, who was interviewed on ENCA. But I want to go back to that because you raised an interesting thing with this, and I don't know if you spotted it. That, that chap we're talking about, this is a, a, a young black man, maybe around my age, 30-something, um, who was interviewed by the media on that day just outside the school. And he went into a very lucid explanation of how he went to the school. You know, he, uh, his family goes there, as you mentioned, and he didn't experience cases of racism. Now, I don't think he was broadly denying that racism uh, doesn't exist generally in society. That wasn't his angle. That wasn't the question. Um, and that wasn't the question at all. But then, to, uh, to that point, the journalist wanted that to be the issue. The yeah. follow-up question was along the lines of, well... Um, effectively conceding that none of this that's happening here had anything to do with race, then peppers him with the question of, well, what about what we hear as the media that the school isn't transformed enough, you know? Well, what do you think about that? Yeah. The media and its toxic role in this, Roman. Yeah, they even said, do you, do you feel like you were racially discriminated against because <laughs> the school's not transformed? <laughs> and it's like, stop leading the witness, you tits. Yeah. Like, this is, like, <clears throat> if, if this was a court, the judge would say, leading question, offside, mm. right? But... It just shows the media also has this obsession with race. And the media <laughs> and the EFF, they just love each other. They obsessed like a club. They obsessed with race. Obsessed, obsessed, obsessed. And then you had Hartfall Cape Town come through. Uh, what's his name? Fadil. Yeah, Fadil Adams, is it? Uh, Abrams or Adams? Abrams. I know it's an A surname. So apologies to you, Fadil, yeah. if you put your name. Yes, apologies. But Hartfall Cape Townian is like vehemently not a liberal institution. Mm. Let's just call it that. And they come on the scene and says, well, what's, what's the thing about racism? Yeah, you know, racism exists, but we'll, we'll outgrow it as a country, right? The big problem is abject poverty. Mm -hmm. And the EFF says nothing about that whatsoever. So a hot full Cape Townian in that scenario is like one of the most reasonable voices. <laughs> That's and actually like delicious irony. <laughs> and I like um, hot full Cape Town. Don't get me wrong, I like them. But for them to be the more reasonable voices, mm -hmm. it just shows you how far away the conversation is from people on the ground. Absolutely. Um, Guys, if you're just joining us, I'm in conversation with Uroman Kabanak, the host of Morning Shot. You can always find his stuff at www.morningshot.co.za. Make sure you go over there, uh, like his stuff. There is some merch on there. Please, please, please buy. I know his coffee is uh, highly regarded. He calls it, is it the best coffee in the country? Uh, uh, the best, uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, <laughs> shamelessly plugging it that way, because it is. There you go. Uh, make sure you go over to his website and, of course, on all his social media platforms and uh, like and subscribe on YouTube. Um, Ramon, we now are in a situation where the average South African looked at what happened in Brackenfell. And, again, I must repeat this because I said it in the, in, the, uh, in the vlogs I did. I do not condone the violence. I don't condone the fact that, you know, people were being beaten up. And in some cases, guys had baseball bats beating up women. I don't condone that. I don't think anybody condones that. But, it, but let's not play stupid um, and pretend as if those parents didn't rock up to that scene with the context of who the EFF are in the back of their minds. And they effectively preempted that, you know. Um, let's not pretend that those parents aren't angry at the idea that the EFF politicians are now targeting seemingly kids and really family members. Talk to me about then the average South African who watched those scenes and said, huh, so it actually is possible to push back against the fascist left in this country. Yeah, I think, I think, I think for the ordinary South African to watch that, they would understand immediately what the parents were trying to do mm. and they understood immediately what the EFF was trying to do. Right to me, it's a case of self-defense for the most part. Uh, the EFF are not from there; they have no constituency there for the most part. Uh, they were there without any any sort of understanding of the situation, mm -hmm. and they lie about the situation mm -hmm. constantly. And I think for the first time, they got they got smacked. They got they got hit quite hard. And Julia said he will go to the next 
whatever, mm. uh, protest, mm. whenever that might be. There. Apparently, there was one meant for yesterday. Yeah, but it was, was yesterday. But, but that was very muted. No yeah. one was there yeah. for some reason. Uh, and I think it's the first time people say, look, the, the EFF is a bit of a, there's a bit of like a, it's like a big shadow, but when you like prod it, there's, mm. there's actually not much there mm. for the most part. I don't recommend hitting EFF members in mm. public. And we means. really don't, guys, because I know it's oh. going to happen. Ah, there they go again. The right wingers saying, uh, what's it, dog whistling. <laughs> they're, they're people. Yeah, don't hit people. It's just not good for you. In self-defense, absolutely, go for it. Um, but, <laughs> but I think it, it, it has taken ordinary South Africans to actually fight back. Mm. Mm. right? And then the police arrived, and the police attacked the parents. Yeah, which is <laughs> weird. It was really weird to watch. Um, and I want to get your sense on this too, because I've got a feeling that the EFF didn't rock up again on yesterday, on Tuesday, because effectively they were then about to fight a whole bunch of... Um, uh, currently, right now, by elections across the country. So I think they just, this is my, just my conspiracy, or rather my theory around this, which is I think they just sort of said, okay, cool, let's deal with the, 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 the by elections first. And then they will likely, and my estimation will be, they will rock up again, um, either on Thursday or Friday or whatever the case may be. Because I've always said this before Julius Malema is a media whore. He will go to that school be a loud mouth, blah, 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 politics, because he must get his pound of flesh in terms of media attention out of that, um, that issue. So we're going to see them transition now, the way I see it, to no longer focusing on the fact that, uh, the f that what's now proven to be a false story of the whites-only matric dance, and it will now be a case of, all oh, the schools never, uh, quote, hired a black person before in its history. It's not transformed enough. It's what we'll probably hear being grinded out by not only the political elites, wh which media rep um, Malema represents the mainstream media of course who are obsessed with race that you made the point about but of course the chattering classes too you know including the work punditry who have literally been poisoning our ma uh, mainstream media with their analysis uh, on just these very various issues mm -hmm. um i want to get your take on that but also talk to me about uh you know a a other communities across the country who are watching this and thinking then how do we fight back against this how do we actually begin to push back and defend that faith flag family and freedom type society that I argue we actually really are. So I, I see the EFF using race as an inflection point, right? They use it as a point just to get somewhere and then you see the strategy play out mm. for clicks, right? The advert for the shampoo was dumb, right? Whatever. They completely emasculated clicks. Mm. Now try be a corporate trying to take on the EFF in the future. Mm. You can see what is going to happen to you if you're not smart, mm -hmm. which clicks wasn't smart in the slightest. Senegal, same thing, but the farmers did not retaliate in the way they expected. So I think that was a bit of a flop for the EFF in particular. Brackenfell can be good or bad for the EFF. They can now claim victimhood. <coughs> all they want, personally thinking, all they want is for the EFF members to be sort of gunned down in public. They can use that as a election campaign for the next 20 years. Mm -hmm. When the racists try to kill us, mm -hmm. it just shows how right we are. Right. And it definitely was that attempt, wasn't it, to, to immediately, I mean, without even examining the situation, we were told that those parents were right wing Afrikaans bure who hate blacks. It had nothing to do with that. But, yeah. but even in Senegal, you go to, to yeah. a bail court hearing where a farm murderer, mm. or murderers in this instance, and you sing Kill the Boer. Yeah. That's not by accident. And then Malema goes on stage and gives you a distorted, warped historical analysis of what whites have done to blacks in this country for 400 years. That's not a, that's not a mistake, guys. Uh -huh. That's not a mistake. It's called scapegoating. Uh -huh. And as a Brackenfell parent, if you've been scapegoated for 10 years, you've been told that you committed genocide or your mm -hmm. forefathers did, that you are racist, that you have white privilege, etc., etc. And the people saying that to the world are right in front of you and want to go into the school where your children are writing exams. Mm -hmm. I would see red as well. Mm -hmm. Excuse the pun. No, excuse the, the very delicious yeah. pun in that case. Um, I have two minutes, Ramon. Um, Can we talk about the DA quickly? That's where I was going. Oh. Um, because the DA then pushed out a press release. Bongo Simatigizela, he's the provincial leader in the Western Cape, Push out the, pushes out a press release. Um, says a whole bunch of stuff, but ends it off by drawing a parallel between the EFF, that's the Economic Freedom Fighters, with the brown shirts of the Nazi party back in the 30s. Your thoughts on that? Uh, very apt. Uh, mm -hmm. The media have been saying this for years, by the way. The ANC called Judas Malema a Nazi in 2014. Exactly. <laughs> That's delicious irony. Right. The Daily Maverick <laughs> have said 
uh, Julius Malimba is trying to build the African Reich, mm-hmm. right? Uh, the rise of fascism with a picture of Julius Malimba next to the headline. Mm-hmm. The Sowetan, same thing. So they've been called fascists by the media for the longest time. So uh, there's a weird scenario where they're called fascists, uh, but they really like when they take on racism. Mm. Like there's, there's this weird love-hate relationship between the media and, and the EFF. The, uh, the DA, finally, after years of being emasculated, come out and say, yeah, they are brown shirts, and in South Africa we have the red shirts, mm. and people should not count out to fascists. Mm. And then the blue-ticked journalist who, who said the EFF were fascists for themselves. years, now saying this is terrible, you can't do that. It, um, it, it just creates division. You can't be polite to people who say they want to kill you. Mm-hmm. You can't be polite to people who say they want to take your kids out of a school because it's a racist school. You can't be polite to those sort of people, mm. right? Polite politics works if you're a Labour MP and a Conservative MP and you're talking about what fraction of the tax rate you want to change. Then you can have a discussion. But when people say they want to drive you out of the country and they, want, and they say that you're responsible for all of the problems this country has ever faced, mm. how can you be polite to them? Mm-hmm. No, and I've now finally said the DA has... Finally done it. Absolutely. And then they picked a fight with the Human Rights Commission, oh. <laughs> <laughs> which says, which and the Human Rights Commission, the kangaroo court of the highest Absolutely. order. We know that. Absolutely. All to the brim with cadres, Absolutely. ANC cadres. That's all it is. Right? Don't give Said nothing when Unke was, for example, in Senegal, mm. was saying, let's go out and kill farmers and burn farms. Literally sang a song about burning our farms. And then ironically, or not so ironically, farms started going up in flames in the country. Mm. They were not to be seen on that issue. Nothing but the all. moment anything happened in Brackenfeld, First press release was this. No, they say, oh, we were disappointed to hear about the segregation. What, what segregation? segregation? And then the DA says, fake news, go with your fascistic buddies, the EFF. <laughs> and I'm like, finally. Mm. Like, where is it? Like, finally. Mm. You know, because this is DA territory, guys. Mm. DA must fight for the people in its own territory. Right. And I think they're doing that to a far larger degree now. And hopefully it continues. Absolutely. I've run out of time, Ramon. Um, talk to me about your show. What can we expect on the morning shot? And of course, how do the folks find you? Right, so it's a show that's um, released every single day at 7 a.m. on YouTube. That's the primary uh, delivery method. It's also a podcast. And every day I analyze and dissect two or three mostly South African stories. Uh, so i tell you what the story is, then i give you my analysis on that particular story. Lovely. Notably around, around policy, around laws, and around sort of political strategy of what the ANC tr- and the EFF predominantly are trying to do. How do we support your work? Uh, you can become a member on YouTube. Uh, you can join me on YouTube. But literally, just, just being a subscriber is more than enough for me. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, guys, that's Ramon Kabanek from the Morning Shot Podcast. Super appreciate that. And uh, super appreciate you. Uh, thank you for watching this episode of the BDL Show. I'm sorry it could not be live, uh, but I will open up the live comment section i'm sure that's going to be lit and i'll go through that a bit later with that being said remember you'll find me on your screens <laughs> um on facebook youtube and ever increasingly on these other uh, platforms about instagram live and all of that uh, hey man you know me i always say i'm not that tech savvy but i will find you on your social media streets <laughs> and um remember you can support the big daddy liberty show including the mission of getting actual liberty ideas in communities across the country that often don't hear these ideas by simply donating a dollar a month on the show please please consider doing that that's 20 bucks of your lives. Buy me coffee um, if I can uh, steal from Romans. Yeah, buy, buy coffee. <laughs> there you go. Um, uh, simple, the, all the information is in the link of the description. Look out for vlogs as they will be coming out this week. And I'll see you next week on the Big Daddy Liberty Show.